This is Hiroja Shaib with another episode of Satoshi's Treasure Hunters. And this is the weekly uh, hunt update. This is August 13th. And we are at 50 keys. That's right. We are at 50 keys that have been released by the game makers. So let's kind of get... So here we are. Um, it's August 13th and there have been 50 keys released. Uh, we're going to talk about that, we're going to talk about updating what has been solved so far in the hunt, we'll talk a little bit about the game mechanics of the game, like what kind of refreshing people that may be new to the game or starting getting into the hunt and is a good you know, primer if you're looking to recruit somebody into your clan or you've had expressed interest in what Satoshi Treasure Hunter is and we're going to discuss like a little bit about the, the hunt itself and the different types of clues that are involved. And then we'll discuss some of the, the criticisms and the game mechanics that's been happening so far with the game. First off, uh, Satoshi's Treasure Hunt started four months ago, which was like April 15th, which in the States is tax day. That's when a message was released through a service called the Block Stream. Um, that message was basically breaking down uh, that the game makers are seeking specific people for this game, for this hunt. Um, I'm not going to read the message again, but I will have a, a link in the show notes to that message. But basically, it was advertising that there was going to be a unique treasure hunt that's going to take place both in the real world and on the internet, in which it's going to be global. It's going to encourage uh, both individuals and people to form groups or clans, as they put it in the message, to solve these puzzles, obtain certain goals, and achieve what are called keys. And the keys were a method of splitting the private key to the Bitcoin prize. Uh, the Bitcoin prize at the time of the initial first launch of the game was to be uh, the value of $1 million in USD in Bitcoin, which could vary from either being 190 minimum Bitcoins to somewhere as high as possibly 300, depending on when the game makers uh, decided to split the private key in a unique way. That unique way is called Shamir's uh, Secret. Basically, they just divided the, to make it simple, they divided the, the private key in such a manner that it's these 1,000 pieces. Uh, to kind of hide the, the private key. And you only need 400 out of the 1,000. So it could be any 400 combination of these keys, and that will allow you access to the bounty. You'll be the winner, and you would win the equivalent of 1 million USD in Bitcoin. But since the, pri the value of Bitcoin has gone up, that of course means that the prize pool itself has gone up. Um, note this to up to this moment the actual public address that has the containment of those bitcoins has not been released uh, the game makers have stated that they are going to make it a key or a puzzle or a clue that people have to solve and then therefore they will know what the public address is that hasn't quite happened yet um, and we'll talk about that with the game mechanics but that's pretty much the the gist of the game itself now there have been a total of 32 keys that have been named by the game makers on their site. I should say 30 keys have been named on the website with the two additional keys. the art tour key and the business car key have not um, been placed on the website. They're just kind of like you can say hidden keys. And they are the first two hidden keys so far. There could be more, but at the present time, the business car key, which is uh, basically you have to track down certain game makers at conferences, obtain their business card, collect a total of 15, and this will allow you to combine and find the key that's associated with the business card. The art tour key was part of a, a, an exhibit that occurred in New York back in May. No one's been able to 
obtain that key so far. And personally for me, I, I think it's kind of a dead end at this point. But those those are basically, you know, the keys that have been released or clues of you. And as a result of these named puzzles, these named keys, we have a total of 50 keys so far. So 50 out of the potential 400 you need to combine to get, obtain the private key uh, of the thousand potential keys out there. And again, it could be like the first 400 puzzles, if you will, or keys that are released. If you solve all of those, you can get the Bitcoin prize. Or it could be like 405, 652, any combination thereof to order to obtain the grand prize, which is uh, the equivalent of 1 million USD in Bitcoin. According to the game makers, um, Eric Melser, who has been the prominent uh, spokesperson for the game, uh, this game is only supposed to take a year. And at the pace that it's going, it, it doesn't feel like it could potentially be done in a year's time. Um, some keys have been released, you know, one after another, as it has occurred this week, where it's been like a two-day span. Uh, there's been gaps of 16 days to 11 days for a uh, clue to drop, for a key to be released. Uh, this has been some of an issue about the pacing, where people don't necessarily have the time to to devote really to a game that's going this slow um, and also the uncertainty if you will the fact that the Bitcoin public address has not been released by the game makers um, this has been an issue uh, the the pacing of the game has been an issue and the release has been of the Bitcoin address has been an issue for the game uh, another issue is because of the culture surrounding Bitcoin and development and, and cryptocurrencies, there is a significant privacy issue that people have with the game. A number of the different um, puzzles revolve, evolve um, basically revealing your public face, if you will, in order to obtain um, or solve the puzzle. For example, the, the cult key um, which was where you had to build a the blockchain where you had to have a series of members of your clan showing their face and doing a symbol in order to obtain that key. It was a bit of an issue. There's been a, a couple other uh, puzzles that are similar to that. Uh, the pair key, for example, is another one where you have to kind of reveal like a location and your public face in order to obtain the key. So some people have an issue with that, the fact that um, they can't be anonymous or something for this type of a value in order to um, participate in the game. Um, the other particular issue for the game is the purchasing of items. For example, very early on, uh, the fourth key, the pawn key, uh, the rabbit key, you have to purchase an egg in order to obtain a QR code and then from the QR code you'll be able to solve the puzzle. And one of the criteria initially off the bat was that there wasn't going to be some kind of purchasing in order to participate. And so some people took issue with that. They allowed that to be the one-off, but then there were things like the philanthropy key, where you had to, for the Binance um, charitable funds, have like the largest contribution, whether it be as an individual hunter or a clan, in order to obtain the key. So basically buying the key. And again, this is something that people have taken issue with, where they didn't expect or anticipate that they had to spend their own money to be able to purchase a key. This is not something that was promised from the initial setup by the game makers, that there wasn't going to be a need to purchase anything to work to participate. And so there's been a, a harsh feelings on this, uh, particularly, oh, I say, with the privacy issue, with the... Uh, so certain marketing keys, like the cult key, where you have to kind of spam these numbers in order to get the, um, um, I think it's the cult key, it's probably confusing, uh, mixing up my keys there, in order to obtain some points that, that will let you have a key, and this is, you know, this has been a bit of an issue for some people, and I think you can see that in the, the official telegram, um, channel, which is something that the game makers are participating in. Uh, they didn't initially set it up, but they are participants in that channel. Um, they do have an official Twitter account you can get a hold of. You can go on their site, you can see their official 
um, channels of communication, and one of them finally being an email address. Uh, that there's not quite as much activity as it was initially when the game started. Uh, I think this is tempered people taking a step back and maybe kind of waiting to either see that Bitcoin public address going up or seeing some changes in the dynamics of the different types of puzzles going out. Not everyone likes the geolocation keys, you know, going out into the real world. They're more concerned about, are more favorable towards the, the, the cartography or the computer skill type puzzles. And that's more of a preference. I don't want to say that's much of a game mechanic issue with the game. But I would say that the um, the privacy issue, uh, the lack of disclosure when it comes to the uh, Bitcoin public address, uh, the fact that you had to purchase in order to obtain keys, uh, and the kind of marketing angle where people had to provide their information in order to obtain a key uh, is, you know, again, it ties into privacy, but there's a, a different ways about that with those two different issues. Um, there's the face, public face, and then there's the different aspects of the marketing that they're trying to push here. And I think fifth really is that the game makers are not very consistent with their communication with the, the hunters themselves. Uh, this day and age, you have to have a, a, a social media person. Um, every business has one. Uh, you know, you see that with the fast food chains with like Wendy's and uh, Chick-fil-A to some extent uh, or Burger King or stuff like that I'm going back and forth you have to have a social media presence and that's something people have an expectation of is being able to at least get a clear-cut connection or communication from the product or company um, whether it's emails phone numbers social media presence of some sort uh, to be able to get a hold or contact and that's a very big issue uh, it's a very big issue in tech in general, like Facebook, Twitter, Google. There's not a phone number for customer service. Uh, Amazon has one. But these, you know, the big three, I would say, that's often brought up. And so a lack of crystal communication on the part of the game makers it's, it's a bit of a misstep. It really is. And uh, I think it's kind of hurting the game because there's not like a blog post explaining any of the changes. They've changed the website, like why they did that versus, you know, um, a different way. For example, going from found to unknown. Uh, that was the, initially what the um, website looked like for each of the keys to know if someone solved something or not. And they changed it to available to unavailable. So it means that people don't know when a key, a key has been solved or not or been found. They just know if it's still available or not. And I'm not sure if that's going to be significantly huge for game mechanics beyond the fact that unless someone publicly disclosed, which they don't or do not have to, but right now people are doing so, that they solve for a key. People don't know like where they are as far as something being solved. And also tools there is promise of tools being available for people to verify that they have the correct key or even as far as solutions helping solve for some of these um, puzzles because when it comes to it a lot of times some of the um, programs that people are using they're like from 2014 2015 it's 2019 some of the programs are a little old some are a little out of date some don't work for every operating system and there's not a really a consistent tool set for people to utilize if they want to be able to solve puzzles, particularly for the fact that the game makers are so trying to broaden the player base to general users or general purpose users, if you will, to borrow a phrase from the Bitcoin podcast, uh, not to have a list of tools that people can download and verify and know it's safe to download or use to help them you know solve for a particular puzzle but the key thing is the checking and verifying that they have a proper cat and the pacing has uh, like i said hasn't turned out turned some people off if they were to dump like 10 clues at a time in a given week and then the following week another 10 and then another 10 and so it's constantly people are constantly working on these different puzzles um 
I think that would make for a better game. It just will. It will force people to change their group dynamics, allow them to, you know, this person works on these set of clues, this person works on these set of, you know, puzzles, this person has a better, you know, network to get those geolocations done, things of that nature, and I think it will cause it for a better community reach and stuff like that. Right now, even though it's so fairly early as far as, even though we only have 50 keys um, released and um, 32 named uh, keys if it, or clues, if you will, uh, people are kind of hoarding like dragons. They're not quite as sharing as they should be. Um, personally, I think it's a bit of a mistake on the part of clans. I think if they did more public releases, I think they would get more people engaged and involved in their clans. I understand that people are like, well, they're just going to take the keys and then abscond. I mean, you can start cutting things off after like 100, 150, or 200. Um, I think you get more, uh, you know, more flies with honey. I think you get better reception from people, particularly in the public channels, um, in the in the clan dynamics. You can get more engagement, more people feel that they, they can participate in some fashion. That, oh, I can't participate in this particular puzzle but I can participate in this puzzle or I can make this kind of contribution and feel worthwhile and part of the clan or asking questions or learning how to do something and like, okay, what tool sets did you use to figure this out? So the next time this similar clue comes up, I too can participate, I can too, too can figure it out. And I think for the most part, from what I'm seeing with the different um, observations of different clans, that that's not quite as, well, quite, uh, not quite, Quite happening as it was early on in the game and I don't know if that's because of the tone set by the game makers or what's going on or if you know the uncertainty of certain things but that's where it is right now but for the most part for myself it's still pretty fun just trying to learn and I finally figure out how to work bin walk um, <laughs> don't know where I can contribute from there once I figured out how to use that particular thing but um, yeah, there's that. Uh, but let's let's talk about what's going on with the game right now. I mean, that's the state of the game, the basics of like the game mechanic issues, if you will. The fact that we've been doing this for almost four months. That there's 32 uh, name keys, if you will, 30 of them on the site, and that we're at um, 50 keys released because some of these name keys have multiple keys attached to them. Like D Live has six attached to them. So let's let's talk about the current stuff so as you can see from the site going down we have a quite a large list of different name keys um the last time we did an update um i think it had to do with the world key perhaps or the street key so the street key um is expired it ended july 28th i believe was the last date for that and they have not yet named uh the winner or at least i've not seen any clan declare that they obtained the street key uh the world key cash zero one is still available there's been a number of different clans or people that have stated that they in fact have um all the world keys um the geolocation key there the pair key ends um, August 15th, so now will be the time to kind of post on Twitter or get your uh, pair together so that way you can um, attain that particular key. Uh, the STC key expired. People have declared that they have uh, found that key. The checkerboard key, so far nobody has said that they've solved that key yet. Uh, the corrupted key, uh, there's been posts that stated that people have found that, but it's still available for people to find. Um, we've had the, uh, the Steam Clan has stated that they, in fact, have found the Chroma Key. And there have been other um, posts um, about that. The Hackathon Key is going on to September 1st, so that's still available and hasn't been found. The United Key, no one has declared that they have found that. The World Key Cash Zero Two, uh, the Toshi Cipher Group has announced that they found the Chicago geolocation from that. And if you look at it, the key fragment is zero two two, as far as the numbering goes. Uh, for now, for a while now, we know the numberings have been a little bit off with the different keys, um, but as of now, um, 
Pikey is still available. The uh, Toshi Cipher group has announced that they have found that particular Chicago key. I also have a link in the show notes um, from the public channel where you can see an individual also found um, that key and they have a picture of the QR code if you will so maybe you from there you might be able to zoom in and enhance and piece together um, that particular um, key we'll see uh, but again if you have the ability to get out to Chicago or know somebody in Chicago that stuff is up and available and the second part of the geolocation key the Seattle part is um, to be announced and that's supposed to be announced August 14th so that is So let's talk a little bit about the different natures or the different types of puzzles, if you will, that are part of the game. Just kind of refresh a, a refresher for everyone out there, but also for anybody new to kind of what to expect that so far about the different puzzles that have been done or uh, made up by the uh, game makers. So first off, you have basically a cartography key where you have to use some kind of development skills in order to be able to figure out what these red dots down here for the checkerboard key to order to in some fashion or some way solve for uh, the passphrase for the, <clears throat> the crypto page. So you have those type of keys and the, those keys have pretty, been pretty frequent with the game. Um, I think I'll give the game makers um, credit. They have been pretty balanced with the different type of styles of puzzles out there to, to be able to um, allow for people with different skill sets to be able to participate. Also for just, you know, mind sake for enough for variety. I mean, if there was cryptography clue or puzzle one after another after another, I, I would imagine it gets tedious and a bit boring for some people. You have the kind of logic key where you have to do a little bit of internet sleuthing. This is the distance key where you had to basically look at this page, zoom in, and realize that you had to go to a meeting that took place on a specific date. Listen into that meeting uh, after downloading the, uh, what is called the Zoom app. And from there, you'll be able to obtain the passphrase and the decryption page for this particular key and be able to, um, you know, get the key. Next one is contest keys have come in two forms. One is basically a video emphasis, um, kind of marketing, if you will, um, <clears throat> shooting, if you will. Um, this is where I got my confusion about the different keys. Uh, the blockchain key, the chain key, if you will. This is where um, the clan key, this is where people had some started having some issues about the direction of the game. This one, you basically had to shoot a video, make the you know the little sign, and then create a chain of uh, blocks, if you will, through Twitter. The other one, the other contest key, has been collaborations. Those collaborations have um, been mostly with CoinList. The other one was with Binance, and we'll talk about Binance towards the end. Uh, basically, you have to have some development skills to order to be able to try to win the prize and get uh, that particular key. Now, I, I do put that under the contest key for the simple fact that you're you have to win. You have to win the contest now. I might change that just to be specific for coin list. I would have to see maybe one more collaboration before I do that, where I see one more uh, development skill set you have to have in order to particularly uh, win a particular key. The first one was Z Stark one. Now there's this one. Um, if I see another one, then I will do. I will call this category something different. Maybe just a developer key um, or developer puzzle, if you will. And then you have the geolocation ones. This is my personal favorite, where people have to go out in the real world, use their social networking, or if they happen to be in that city, 
go out hunt around the city and find QR codes to order to be able to obtain the key. And then this is the code breaking one where you have to use a bit of logic, maybe a bit of cryptography in order to uh, solve for a particular puzzle. In this case, this was the Aesop key where you had to use or have a, an instant knowledge knowing that this was the code from New World Order's um, record and be able to use this as a reference, use this I think as the key breaker and then um, solve for the different, um, basically for the decryptor page and for the the key, key phrase, phrase from, from the, the breaking of this code. code. And then you have a bit of a combination key where you have to use a bit of cryptography as well as um, logic, if you will. In this case, you had to be able to read the narrative clues from the Obon key and know that you had to go to Twitter and then you had to figure out the Twitter list to find the, um, the Twitter handles to find um, the puzzle pieces and then take the puzzle pieces, piece them together, and then from there be able to figure out the, um, the decryptor page and the passphrase for the Obon key. So a bit of cryptography, uh, logic, and um, crypto was involved, and code breaking was involved for this particular key. A sponsor key and a payment key. So sponsored by somebody for people to pay in order to obtain the key. Uh, this is one of the keys or clue drops, I would say, that was um, turned a lot of people off, that they had to purchase, you know, basically purchase for a key. And uh, not everyone participated, but those who did participate, you know, did obtain the key. Um, the biggest one was Toshi Cypher Group. They were able to obtain three out of the four keys. Uh, I think there's going to be more like this where you have to purchase in order to obtain the key. But, yeah. Um, but that's the style so far that's been uh, done by the game makers. So basically, to recap, it's you have to have so much understanding of the topic. So to recap. So recapping here, so we have the crypto key, we have to use a bit of cryptography or computer development school skills in order to be able to obtain the key for, um, to be able to break down the puzzle and obtain the key. You have a bit of a logic puzzle where you have to use, use your uh, deductive reasoning, your skills, a little internet sleuthing to be able to obtain the key there. You have the contest key where you shoot videos and participate either in a clan, uh, small group, big group, or in the case of the pair key, two people to order to obtain to win the contest. You have a collaboration or development skill key. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a cheese wizard example. Before that was a Z Zark development um, collaboration where you have some development or co development computer skills in order to win a contest and obtain the key, as well as some money. We have the geolocation keys, which uh, you have to go to a place in Disney part of the Earth and be able to obtain the QR code. Code breaking. Combination keys, where you have to use a bit of uh, logic, cryptography, and some probably code breaking to some extent. It did come in different forms, but there's been a, com a couple puzzles that have had you require uh, all sorts of different skill sets in order to be able to solve. And then there's the um, purchasing of the key. In this case, uh, through finance, through charitable contributions. Before that, there was the Lupin key. But this is so far, I think, is a category that is going to happen a bit more often. Now, um, something I would like to mention is. Um, 
briefly about the EA makers and these um, collaborations. Um, it was mentioned in the public chat um, to Soshi, in the public um, channel to Soshi Shoshan for Telegram that not everyone can participate in the uh, Cheese Wizard contest. Um, people are blocked. Um, I will link in the show notes so you can go to that specific um, thread, if you will. And if you look in the terms of services, that's true. If you're from Canada, there's a lot of Canadian dialogue when I look at the privacy policies and their terms of services that you're pretty, pretty much boxed out, but you're, that, that's not the only um, set of people. And for something that's supposed to be global, I think that's a bit of an issue where if you're gonna have these keys made available, that not if not everyone can participate because of the particular location, then that's a problem. It means not everyone can obtain the key. Granted, not everyone has development skills, but they either participate in some fashion with a group of people, or if you have the development skills, but because you're in Canada and you can't participate, that's that's a bit of a shame, if you will. And I hope that the game makers, you know, take take that more into consideration when they do these collaborations, and that they make sure that as, as wide breadth of people can participate and and be able to get into the contest if they can. So there you have it. Um, I have a link in the show notes as well as right here to the my thoughts about clan dynamics. I think I pretty much covered that pretty well. But yeah, yeah so we are at um, 50 keys. You know, like the progression to go better, but we'll see as the month goes on where we are. Uh, for the most part, I'm still fairly much enjoying the game, even with the various hiccups and little qualms that everyone has. I've shared the same qualms myself. Uh, I think there's still room for improvement. I think the game makers can still do better. Um, but for the most part, I'm still enjoying, um, even at my level of participation, uh, much of many aspects of the game. So I hope this has been very educational. I do have to say that I'm going to change some of the dynamics of just how I, I do things uh, with this channel. Um, changing up the videos, if you will, a little bit, making them a little bit shorter. I've uh, gotten some feedback on that. I do want to say that I would like to thank the um, I think about 53 people that have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any comments or anything you would like to make any input about the fact that we were at 50 keys, what you think um, are issues for you for the game, what you think are doing well, um, what, you, what the pace of the game you would like to see. Uh, maybe you want to shout out your clan um, or you know, any input you like, you can just put it down in the, you know, the comments below. So that's it, just to wrap it up. Um, talk about the state of the game, the type of the different puzzles that are available, what has been solved so far, a um, bit of the game mechanic issues, and I hope this has been informational. And um, I guess you can say I'm going to go 50 at a time, so this is Next time you see me, it's going to be season two of Satoshi Treasure Hunters. Uh, this has been Haruji Shai, and good luck to you individual hunters and clans out there on the game. And